You're listening to Sweep the League. Hey, this is George Iceman Gerber, and you're listening to Sweet the League Radio. Welcome back, everybody. It is a Taco Tuesday of the video. Ah, let me get that right again. Taco Tuesday episode of Sweep the League brought to you by La Cocina Taco Truck in New Braunfels, MCS General Contracting, the absolute best general contractors in the business, Castro and Son Solar Company, and Special Leaf Tea. Telling you guys, jump on that Special Leaf bandwagon. It's some healthy, healthy stuff, man. We got a great show tonight. It's going to be myself. It's going to be the Hall of Famer, Derek Gervin. We're going to be breaking down the WNBA All-Star Weekend. Saw some uh, saw some glimpses of what the future is going to hold for the WNBA. Also, Team USA, another scare against Germany. Does that play a factor? Do Are we still undervaluing and underhyping Team USA? I've made mention before that I have them as a bronze-winning team. I don't see them winning gold. I don't see them winning silver. We made we made a point to where they're in what division the C class C, but even that class is not very easy. They have still have to go up against Serbia. They've got to go up against South Sudan again, who almost gave them a scare recently. Are you going to get the better teams against Team USA playing at a higher level? We're going to get into that as well as the Olympics are right around the corner. We saw the women's Team USA. Uh, dominate today against, I believe it was Germany, so they're ready to go. Not only that, some NFL news, C.D. Lamb, uh, looks like he's going to be holding out. The other thing that we were talking about a while back, that's he was probably going to hold out without a contract, so uh, just a lot of stuff to get into. It's going to be myself. It's going to be Derek Gervin. We'll see if Coach Geo joins us here in a little bit, but let's get into a couple of comments while Derek's coming on here. We got Tim Gonzalez, of course, the Blue Devils suck. Tar Heels to rule everything. Great, great, great wrestling talk last night, Rudy. Yeah, I'll be watching AEW. I want to record it for you guys, and I'll do, do a show. And Leha, what's good, cabrones? Secure the bag, hustle hard, and remember, no feelings, only chaos. MCS General Contracting. Shout out to Chris Leha, man. You're definitely right. You got to hustle hard. You got to secure the bag. You know what? You also got to put the people that help you get to where you want to go, put them in front, put them in the spotlight, let them shine because they're helping you grow. Appreciate everything that you do for us here. Let's bring on the Hall of Famer himself, Hall of Famer Derek Gervin. Derek, what is up, man? Hey, how you doing? Good evening, sir. Good, man. You, you I didn't get to ask you. You have a good weekend? Yeah, it was great. Uh, we're keeping up with the sports that's going on. I mean, you know, you got golf. <laughs> I mean, you had it all. Soccer has been going on. You had the basketball. You had the, the, the men and women. So it's been a lot going on. Uh, so it's been exciting. I'm doing fine. Yeah, it was a very, very exciting weekend sports-wise. We saw, I, I think we saw the, I guess not, I, can you say a turn of a leaf on the WNBA side? Uh, we're seeing Team USA have their struggles. We're going to get into all that here in just a second. Let's break down the uh, WNBA All-Star Weekend here in just a second, Derek. Got another qu- another uh, comment from Ray Dean. Why not pay Dak? He's a top five quarterback. It's crazy. We're going to get into that. Trust me. We're going to get into NFL talk in the second part of the show here. Uh, a lot of Cowboy stuff coming out, so we will get into that. Don't, don't go anywhere, Ray Dean. Appreciate you joining the show. This first segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting. MCS General Contracting, like we've been saying, the foundation is the most important part. Even for a sports talk show like us, it's built on foundation. MCS General Contracting has helped us build that foundation to provide the sports talk and the entertainment talk that we provide to you guys out there. So shout out to Chris Leha, MCS General Contracting, proud sponsors of Sweep the League. The segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting. You saw Team USA, Derek, versus the WNBA All-Stars on Saturday. We talked a little bit of Friday night about how the WNBA Friday night, the skills challenge was okay. The three-point contest was okay. The three-on-three competition was okay. They're doing a good job building, you know, the All-Star weekend for the the ladies, but then you get into the actual game. And uh, you saw Enrique just go crazy and... I mean, she's been a star in the league for a while, but what I noticed the most was you saw what you and I have been talking about. All the talk about 
Caitlyn versus Angel and there's got to be hatred and all that. That seemed to have been squashed a little bit, in my opinion, on Saturday night because they both played together. At the end, Angel talked pretty highly of Caitlyn. So I like the new turning of the cheek thing that we're seeing in WNBA because Angel made a little comment at the end saying, who knows, in four years, maybe they'll be able to actually play together as teammates. I kind of liked what I saw from the WNBA All-Star game. Well, it was a gay, uh, great game overall. Uh, the game was very exciting. Uh, one of the most exciting that I've seen, uh, men or women. And, of course, the Angel and uh, Caitlin dynamic, of course, has been going on basically since college now. So yeah. I'm hoping we can finally put that behind us and just move forward. Man, it was a great thing. Uh, they got a lot of uh, good things going on right now in the WNBA, uh, including the $2 billion. $2.2 billion over 11 yeah. years. Uh, that's big. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. So I'm excited, man. I mean, Caitlin and the Angel both play well. I thought pretty much everybody played well in the uh, All-Star game. It was it was a competitive, but it wasn't anybody really playing a bad game. Everybody was hustling, giving their all. And I, I thought it was something that was fantastic as they continue to grow the WNBA game. And I'm going to continue to support them. Yeah, it's it's been a fantastic season so far. I had a bunch of ups and downs, more ups, more than down at all. I mean, I, I, I know the whole, like we said, Caitlin, Angel, all that stuff going on. It was eventually going to pass over. And I think the WNBA did a great job because having both of those rookies in the WNBA All-Star game, you showed and it showed everybody that this league is on the right path. And I'm I'm excited to see what else is coming up here. Uh, for the WNBA, great job, man. You know, great shout out to the WNBA there. Ray Dean's got an NBA, quick NBA question. I'm going to let you handle this one. Do you think the Lakers with two top 10 players can win a championship? That's a tough one, Ray. Um, I think the Lakers, I can't overlook them. I'll say they're in the mix. How about that? Uh, because when you got Anthony Davis playing like he's played the last two years, I'll say. Not just uh, here in the Olympics or in the, in the trials or what I mean, you know, the exhibitions. But overall, he's played really well, and LeBron has continued to defy age, I'll say. And so you got to always put them in the mix. Uh, of course, they got Dalton Connect and Bronny now. So I think Dalton Connect is going to be a really important part of their, um, you know, their roster. I think he's yeah. going to play a lot of minutes. Um, I'm excited to see what. They can do with him and Hachimura and Austin Reeves on the wing. And uh, maybe they need one more wing player. But with the team they have right now, I could see them being uh, one of the top six teams. I'll say that. I don't think it's kind of like, you know, when you talk about what Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, it's kind of rule out LeBron James. I mean, I know he's missed the playoffs a couple of times in his career, but it's kind of hard to rule him out. We we know for a fact the West is loaded this year. Like it is massively loaded in the West to where, I mean, even you've got Spurs fans already talking about, well, they got to win 40 games. That I'm, we're, I still don't have them. I think Vegas has them at 36. I still got them around 28, 29, 30 right now. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not buying it, but you know, the West being really loaded, the Lakers with two, you know, top 10 players, anything can happen. We, we, I mean, I always tell everybody, give it till the all-star break because that's when the trade deadline is. If they make another move or two and the right move, then you're talking that the Lakers could be one of the better teams in the West. But right now, I'm kind of like with Derek. Can't really put them in the playoffs just yet, guaranteed. Are they a top six team in the West? Uh, I don't really know yet. They're definitely a play-in team. I, I think they're a play-in team more than they are a playoff team, Derek. They're not much better right now than last year on paper. and uh, But I think they're going to make another move. But right now it's currently constructed. I'm being nice saying number six. And the reason I say that is because uh, the number six team last year uh, didn't have a great record. And uh, I think it was, was Phoenix up there somewhere. Did, who finished six? Maybe that Phoenix? Was, uh, Phoenix, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so they didn't have a great record. Uh, I just think right now, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a toss-up, man. It's early in the year. We don't know what the Lakers are going to do as we move towards uh, preseason or any of that training camp. And, uh, you know, I'll put them in there because they have LeBron and AD playing better than they ever have in, what, in several years, I'll say. Uh, and the best they've ever played, Rudy, as a combination. 
and they've yeah. both been healthier. So that's why I would factor them in, just because they have two of the best players that we're seeing right now on the Olympic team. And I think if they're healthy, um, they're going to be right there in the middle, you know, number six. I can see them being there. You, real quick, I just want to ask an off-the-cuff question, but when you look at Dalton Connect, I mean, what do you, what do you think? He plays 22, 23 minutes right off the bat? Well, you know, that's still to be determined. But, I mean, you got going right in. I would say yes, no less than that. Uh, they're going to have to get this guy in there early. And I think he's ready. So, you know, that he's a shooter. He can go off the dribble. That's something that they've been missing. Uh, they didn't necessarily bring in a veteran yet. But they have this young man. And uh, I think they're going to turn the keys over to him this year and let him play his game. I think his, his – uh, Ascension to be quicker than Austin Reeves, to be honest. I think that he has a little more in his back. He has size, for one. He's a little bigger than Austin. Yeah. I think he can do the same things, and I think he's more athletic than Austin. Yeah. And so I think that's going to help him. Uh, he's a heck of a player. We saw him at Tennessee. I thought he's a heck of a player, uh, player there. And I think he has a bright future. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, and actually, I looked it up. He said Mavericks were the six seed, but actually Phoenix. So Phoenix six. had to be what? Uh, no, no, Phoenix, Phoenix was, was up six. there. Well, yeah, yeah, Phoenix was six. It was Oklahoma City, Denver, Minnesota, the Clippers, Dallas, Phoenix. So I'm looking at the standings. Phoenix was six, actually, yeah. Phoenix was six. But, you know, the thing with Dalton Connect is when, when I go down and I'm looking at the Lakers roster here is I think we see a better breakout year for a player like Austin Reeves. Dalton Connect can make life a lot easier for Austin Reeves because when they're both on the floor, Austin can get to the basket, but you cannot, you know, you can't slip over to guard Austin Reeves. You have to respect Dalton's shooting. So I think a player that benefits from Dalton Connect being there is Austin Reeves. I, I think he actually has a pretty, a pretty damn good season this year. I think so. I agree with that. But it also, we got to factor in the style of play. We don't know what kind of style J.J. Uh, Reddick is going to implement. We know it's not going to be the same plays that yeah. uh, Darvin Ham was running. So that's different. Uh, but it's going they're going to be a, a pretty good team. I mean, they got AD has been playing, to me, honestly, like the best big man the last year and a half. Yeah. And he's definitely been the best defender. And maybe the best defender in the league. Uh, they talked about Gobert and Wimbenyama, but uh, AD was right there in my mind. Yeah. So he's half. continued. The, yeah. But overall, the, the whole course of the season, he was consistent. He played a lot of games. Uh, he just played really well. He made all NBA second team. I thought he did well. And uh, they rewarded him this year with the second team. And uh, with him and a healthy LeBron, LeBron's still looking pretty good. Uh, they could be a yeah. They could surprise some teams in the Western Conference. Yeah, I definitely think they can, man. If you guys want to uh, subscribe to our YouTube, we surely would appreciate it. We're giving away a lot of stuff. We just gave away an Amazon gift card yesterday, twenty five dollar Amazon gift card just for subscribing. I mean, you you got to take advantage of all the prizes and all the stuff we're giving away because you know what? It's free to subscribe. Last time I checked, YouTube doesn't charge you to subscribe. So just all you got to do is get to your YouTube, subscribe to Sweep the League. All you can do is go to YouTube at Sweep the League TV, basically subscribe. And you can get into all the giveaways that we have here uh, at Sweep the League. So, you know, getting back to uh, WNBA talk because of the weekend was there, Derek. I started to really think about something here. And I started thinking, man, you got, I'm going to go all over the place. You got the Celtics. You know, you had the domination of the 49ers. You've got, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got, you know, even the NBA, you've got the Lakers. I mean, so many the New York Yankees in baseball, how do people overlook the fact that the Houston Comets, the original Comets, won the first four? They had a four-peat in the WNBA. The very first four titles were in Houston. How are they not ever considered as a, a dynasty in that era, like for that era, but also they are they were probably the most dominant big three that we've ever seen assembled in any, any sport, I think for basketball, at least, I mean, you're talking Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Swoops and Tina Thompson. There was nobody beating that three trio, that trio at all. Well, you got a lot of the younger people today that don't keep up with the history of the game. So 
they only know the me, 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 uh, what's been going on the last 10 or 20 years. So, so, so 15 years. So they didn't keep up with, uh, the Cynthia Coopers and the Tina Thompson's, the Jennifer, uh, the Jeanette Arcane's and the Kim Peratz. They didn't know anything about that, but without question, they're one of the greatest teams that ever played. And they're the first to do it. Yeah. I mean, you've had the league going on four years. They won four championships. And that wasn't co- that wasn't just by co- uh, coincidence or happenstance. They had some outstanding players that played together. They played for the betterment of the team as opposed to playing for themselves. And they put it all together. And they were rewarded with it. And, of course, they had two of the best players that ever played. And Tina could also arguably be in there as well when you talk yeah. about the best that's ever done it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about earlier, man. Like, geez, you, you've got to give them so much love when it comes to the Houston Comets. That that was definitely one of the dominant teams, overall teams in any sport, any of the major sports. I mean, you're talking what the Celtics are the only team to ever win multiple, and I'm talking four plus outside of eight that. in a row. Yeah, I mean, there's no team that's done it in the NBA. No team's done it in the WNBA. I mean. Buffalo Bills with the four Super Bowls, but I mean, you, they're not, they haven't won. So that's got to be one of the bigger, one of the bigger and better types of accomplishments in all of sports. Uh, Ray saying that Gabe Vincent is back too for uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. Laker, uh, yeah. So, I mean, the Lakers are, uh, they, 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 they're going to be, I think they're going to be about the same. They won what, 47 games last year. I, I kind of put them around that 47 wins as well. Again, I, I don't see more, I don't see less. With a healthy Gabe and possibly a healthy Jared Vanderbilt, I mean, you can look. You're looking at a different team, and B- Vanderbilt played a, a important part when he was healthy. Yeah. Uh, the year now, I won't say this past season, but the season before in the playoffs. So, if you get a healthy Vanderbilt back and you get Gabe Vincent finally acclimated to the team, uh, he doesn't have to worry about Spencer Dinwiddie. He's still in his minutes. So if they give him an opportunity, and I think J.J. Redick is going to start off playing an eight or nine guy rotation. I really believe that. Eight or nine players to start off and try to go that way and see how it goes because you got to give some of those guys, Hachimura and all those guys, an opportunity to be on the floor. And uh, I think they're going to be a better team, a little better team than last year, but it still remains to be seen because we still got a lot of moves out there that are going to happen before the year is over. Is it is it difficult to predict what the Lakers are going to do only because of J.J. Redick? I mean, when you had a head coach being hired, you were like, okay, Pops, Pops here, he's a head coach. We're, we're going to expect hard defensive players. We're also going to expect, you know, a half-court game. Uh, same thing with, like, Jerry Sloan. You get in those types of teams. But not only that, you look at a guy like Mike D'Antoni, and you're like, okay, it's going to be a fast-paced offensive game. It's going to be score, 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 probably not much on the defensive end. But with J.J. coaching the Lakers, it's difficult to say what they're going to run. So would it be ideal to think that it's going to be tough for the first maybe month for teams to actually figure out what the hell the Lakers are doing? Because nobody has seen this guy coach. Nobody knows how he's going to coach. I mean, he's got, what, Nate McMillan as an assistant as well as Scotty Brooks. Two different styles of coaches. So... Mm -hmm. It's going to be, to me, it's going to be difficult, you know, to figure out what these Lakers are going to do right off the bat. I think they're going to get up and down the floor. Um, JJ is a guy we know that shot the three pointer. Yeah. And he's conformed to today's game. And he knows that it takes that three pointer to win. And I think uh, that's why they, one reason they brought in Connect. I think a uh, healthy Gabe Vincent can knock down shots. They've got some guys who shoot the ball. LeBron shot a pretty good percentage, uh, the best of his career, I believe, last year from three. And so they get, you know, D'Angelo Russell is back. Uh, Hopefully he'll be a little more comfortable. And they got a roster. I mean, anytime you got AD out there, it covers up a lot of mistakes on both ends of the court. So when you got that, it always keeps you at least in the running. And some teams haven't upgraded, uh, like my Denver Nuggets. I don't think they've upgraded. So, so that's one team out of the Lakers could give problems, and there are some other, uh, others. Golden State is still a question mark. Uh, we don't know what they're looking like yet. Uh, Sacramento is a question mark now with Demar Derozan, but they lose. Uh, but they signed or resign Malik Monk, so we don't know how that's going to work. 
Uh, Sabonis, is he going to play? We don't know if he's going to be the all-star during the regular season. And then the playoffs, we know what Sabonis we get. So they got a lot, you know, so it's a lot of teams. that. So the Lakers, that's why I put them in that sixth spot. There's a lot of teams that still have questions. The Pelicans still have questions. You know, that one team that we talk about, and we talked about them recently as the Phoenix Suns with, you know, Durant, Beal, and Booker. We say, man, they got to get a point guard. There, there's actually a point guard, surprisingly, that's out there right now. I'm kind of dumbfounded as to how he hasn't been signed, even to a minimum deal. I mean, he doesn't use there's more than a minimum. But if I'm Phoenix, I'm making that phone call to Markel Fultz. And I'm saying, you know what? Let me see if I can get you back into the Phoenix area. Let's get you into Phoenix. Run the point. I'm not asking you to be a scorer. I don't really care if you shoot. Run the point. I think a Markel Fultz would be an excellent distributor and floor general for Phoenix. So that way you're not relying on Bradley Bill or Devin Booker to bring the ball up. I don't know. Is it crazy to think that Markel Fultz could be a starting point guard for that Phoenix team and make a difference? Fultz, or they might even entertain. We'll see what happens uh, because the Knicks brought in Cameron Payne, and we're going to find out that they jumped the gun on that uh, because that kid Tyler Kolek is nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, he can really play the game, and I think they're going to have um, to find minutes for him. But, yeah, if you can get a Markel Fultz, um, some energy, a guy that's still got some years ahead of him, uh, he's been healthy the last year or so. Uh, I would take a chance on that. Phoenix definitely needs a point guard. That's not even a question. We've been through that. We've tried it. It didn't work without a point guard. Devin Booker is not a true point guard, and neither is Bradley Bill. So you got to have someone that can come in there and run the offense. And until they do that, I look at them as the same team they were last year, only I don't think they would finish as high in the rankings right now with the same team. Yeah, I don't know. And the other team that came to mind for point guard position was obviously the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, Mar Markel Fultz with Milwaukee frees up Dame, comes off the screens. Uh, it allows Giannis to roam a little bit freer. So of both teams that need a point guard, I, I think we're looking at, for me, it's Phoenix that desperately needs it with the stars that they have there. Uh, I, I think Fultz fits in really well there. You're right about the Cameron Payne. Uh, the one team that I really love, and I, I know I've talked so highly about them, is Orlando. I mean, Orlando, they've been reloading quietly in the offseason. Hey, Rudy, can I say something quickly about Milwaukee? Yeah. The guy I think fits there, and I still don't think him and Donovan Mitchell are going to play together I, to start the season. Because you Garland. picture Darius Garland in Milwaukee. Oh, man, that would definitely – that's like a Drew Holiday type move from Milwaukee for me. I mean, it's going to make a they get huge there, difference maker. Man. It helps them. Uh, it brings youth to the team. It brings yeah. a guy who I think is still ascending. Uh, he's continuing to get better. And you put him on a team with Giannis and Dame, I think that makes them really – that opens up the floor for Giannis with those two because they both can knock down shots. And then we know Middleton is not going to be there, I don't believe. Um, for the first half of the season, I don't believe. Uh, yeah. But they got to figure out what they're going to do. But if you bring in a guy with Dar like Darius Garland, you get better immediately. It speeds up the tempo, and he's, uh, he's a guy that can go off the dribble and get in there and create, or he can score. Yeah, that's, I'm thinking Darius Garland does make sense there in Milwaukee. Tim's asking a few questions here about Team USA. Tim, on the on the way back from the commercial break, we're going to do our Team USA breakdown for you here. So uh, just be a little patient. We'll get to some Team USA talk on the second part of the show here. Uh, Jeff Garcia, Locked On Spurs. Shout out to Locked On Spurs. He's in here. Uh, Rudy, do you think teams will sleep on the Spurs next season? I really don't know on that sense of the Spurs, if they're going to be sleeping on them. They Everybody has Victor Wimanyama circled. I mean, they they know exactly what they're getting into when they're playing the Spurs. Um, but again, I, I, as constructed, I don't. I mean, I still have them at that thirty wins. Maybe, like I said, thirty two is my ceiling right now. Uh, that's what I've got them as currently constructed. So not so much that they're sleeping on them. I think the Spurs can actually they can sneak up on a couple of teams and maybe make it tough and difficult for teams. But I think Victor's going to be great this season. Like he was last year, probably a little bit better, but again, there's nothing on the team that screams that this team's going to make a whole lot of noise, Derek. Well, teams won't sleep on them because the Spurs play hard 48 minutes. 
And, and if you look at it, they played pretty good in the last 25 to 30 games of the year. And teams remember that. Uh, some of the young guys on these new teams or these new players might have to be made aware of it, but all the veterans are aware of it. Spurs are going to be there. They're going to compete until the uh, clock says zero. And so, no, teams aren't going to sleep on them. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. I mean, they're they're going to know exactly what you know they're getting into when it comes to the San Antonio Spurs this year. I don't think they're going to be sneaking up on anybody or they're gonna, anyone's going to sleep on them. Uh, definitely not, especially with Victor playing now. I mean, Victor's been playing out of his mind. So when we get back, we're going to talk about Team USA. We saw the struggles with South Sudan. We saw the struggles with Germany. Um, we've, we've, Derek and I have talked a little bit behind the scenes on this stuff. We're going to get our takes here for Team USA as they head in to the Paris games. Let's be honest. I, I have more faith in the women's Team USA winning gold than I do the men's, but that, that's been my uh, my concern here for a while is the men's team. So we're going to get into some Team USA talk when we get back. It's Hall of Famer Derek Irvin and Rudy Campos Jr. for Sweep the League. Shout out to MCS General Contracting, Special Leaf D, also La Cocina Taco Truck, and Castro and Sun Solar. We'll be back, guys. Spurs fans, are you ready to stay ahead of the game of the San Antonio Spurs with the best coverage in the business? Tune in to Locked on Spurs, the daily podcast that brings you expert analysis, exclusive interviews, and all the latest news and updates for your silver and black. Join Jeff Garcia, the most informative and entertaining host in the game, as he breaks down all Spurs news and notes, interviews the biggest names, and keeps you locked into all things Spurs. From Monday to Friday, get ready to start your day with the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out on the expert opinions, the hot takes, and the can't-miss guests. Make sure you're locked in with Locked On Spurs. Subscribe to their YouTube channel now and stay ahead of the game all season long. Locked on Spurs. It's the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out. Hey guys, are you ready for a flavor explosion? Look no further than La Casina Taco Truck. Serving up the best street tacos and quesadillas in New Braunfels. With a five-star rating and rave reviews, they're not just a taco truck. They are a taste sensation. La Cocina staff is the best in town and pride themselves on making every customer feel like family. Whether you're feeding a crowd or just satisfying your own cravings, they've got you covered because no order is too big or too small for them there. Louie and his staff are all about customer satisfaction and they love their community. Don't worry, San Antonio friends. They're just a short trip away to New Braunfels. So why wait? Come visit La Cocina Taco Truck today and taste the difference for yourself. That's La Cocina Taco Truck, where every bite is a fiesta. Proud sponsors of Sweep the League. Are you looking for a contracting company that gets the job done right the first time? Look no further than MCS General Contracting. MCS specializes in top quality concrete work, including patios, driveways, foundations, and swimming pools. The team of experts are dedicated to delivering exceptional results and unparalleled customer satisfaction. At MCS General Contracting, they're not just hardworking, they're local. Based in San Antonio, they are committed to building relationships and trust within the community. That's why MCS guarantees your satisfaction. They pride themselves on getting the job done right the first time, every time. So why wait? Contract MCS General Contracting today to schedule your project and experience the difference for yourself. MCS General Contracting. Building a better San Antonio, one project at a time. Proud sponsors of Sweep the League. Pops the mastermind, got the team what we need. Five rings deep, we the dynasty kings. From the Alamo Dome to the banners we bring. Respect the game. All right, welcome back to Sweep the League, the Taco Tuesday edition brought to you by La Cocina Taco Truck. Every Taco Tuesday, 
You got to think about La Casina Taco Truck. Back with Hall of Famer Derek Gervin, Rudy Campos Jr. Shout out to MCS General Contracting, as well as Special Leaf T and Castro and Sons Solar. This next segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting and La Cocina Taco Truck. We did mention La Cocina Taco Truck. It is Taco Tuesday, man. I wish Taco Tuesday was every day because then you hit up La Cocina every day, Thursday through Sunday, 8 p.m. till the last person leaves. The best street tacos and the best quesadillas around South Texas. Trust me. Believe me. The absolute best. Wouldn't lie to you. Derek and I would never lie to you about that. We're telling you the truth here. That's La Cocina Taco Truck, proud sponsors of Sweep the League. If you want to call us, we have the Sweep the League call-in number. is 830-499-1852. Drop your takes. Drop some questions. Do whatever you guys want to do. Speaking of Taco Truck, what's up? Louie, Louie's in here. La Cocina himself here. It is Taco Tuesday. Hit up La Cocina Taco Truck every Thursday through Sunday, 8 p.m. to the last person leaves. What up, Louie? How you doing, man? Um, so, Derek, before we go to the Team USA talk, uh, Jeff's back in here. He says, Derek, you've played pro ball. Do teams really sleep on the opposition? Yes, because sometimes you expect it to be a walkover uh, so you don't prepare yourself like you should mentally and physically. And, uh, yeah, you end up having what they call an upset. It happens a lot of times. Uh, it shouldn't happen, but it does. Sometimes you just think you have too much firepower for another team. And as we know, that on any given day, anything can happen. So if you don't come out prepared and the other team makes the right adjustments and they come out prepared and they want it more, yes, uh, teams can be uh, can overlook the opposition without a doubt. Yeah, it happens a lot. And it happens just about in every sport, man. You overlook a team and, you know, you're, you've got the big game in two weeks and then, you know, you have that week before you have the big game and you're just – just showing up and you get your butt handed to you. It happens all the time, man, in sports. So Ray Dean's in here and he's he's dropping like a lot of stuff that we were talking about. He's dropping a lot of great comments too. He says you need the great assistant coaches. Uh collect have gone will help JJ achieve some success. Yeah, I mean the Nate McMillan Scott Brooks is gonna help JJ Reddick tremendously already. So I think that was two great hires for a guy with no coaching experience. That's definitely two great hires. That's where I think it's gonna be the difference for JJ. It's going to be kind of tough to actually game plan for the Lakers this year to start the season. So uh, we're going to talk some Team USA now. This segment is brought to you again by MCS General Contracting and La Casina Taco Truck. So Tim's dropped a couple of comments here. He says, to me, Derek and Rudy, Team USA need to cut down on their turnovers, play defense. That's their weakness. He's also mentioned the fact that uh, we, he wants to take on USA versus Germany. I believe it was the women's today. Uh, earlier today, and then the other questions that he had was uh, uh, something's wrong with Team USA's men yesterday. To Eric Reed. Okay, yeah. So overall, you know, the Team USA performances against like South Sudan, and then of course against Germany, Team USA was down. I mean, they were losing. It took uh, the one player that you and I believe that if you're going to circle this guys to be the man, it's in, you're you're in trouble. And it's funny because you talk about one of the quote unquote greatest players of the game. And if LeBron James has to be the man, it's safe to say that Team USA is not going to be the man, right? Well, uh, I said going into this tournament, I was hoping he wasn't the best player. Uh, maybe that will change with the addition of Kevin Durant coming back. But, well, I told you, Rudy, yesterday about KD. So I'm going to take that back because it looks like KD is going to be out for a while. Yeah. He's still having calf problems. So um, I think they got to make some adjustments. I still think they got to figure out, uh, I guess MB looks in a little better shape now. Uh, but they got to spread the ball a little more. Sometimes they get a little stagnant and they start going too much one-on-one. -on -one. And I think that's what hurts them the most. Uh, the ball's got to move and it's got to move consistently. And if they do that, then I think they can win the gold medal. But we know saying if, if is a big word, only two letters, but a very big word, um, so they're going to have to get uh, make some changes. And, and, of course, Kerr is going to have to figure out the lineup. I know he's been playing uh, the second lineup. He's been playing everybody the same amount of time. Uh, Derek White, Jason Tatum, Anthony Davis, and Bam Adebayo have all been playing the same amount of minutes. And, of course, Anthony Edwards has played some extra minutes. But they got to figure this out. We can't do the five and five thing, I don't think, all the way through. I don't think that's going to win for us. So uh, Kerr. He's going to have to make some adjustments. 
Uh, is he treating it like, how do you say, almost like an all-star type of game where, I mean, I would treat it more like the NBA. You've got your roster. You've got your lineup. If you guys play, they play. If you guys got guys that are getting 10 minutes a game, you know, eight minutes a game, it's whatever. It's for the benefit of the team. I feel like he's might be coaching as if this was an all-star game. Well, I'm going to get these guys out, and then I'm going to get these guys out. You know, I'm going to let them play. I'm going to let them run. I don't know if that's just lost in translation somewhere when it comes to coaching Team USA because you're putting the best players possible from the NBA majority are all stars a lot of time and superstars in the game. You've got to coach it. I would still think as if it's a regular NBA team, man. I just feel like they bite in, they buy into it too much. Rudy, I think the, the NBA team is the problem. They got to think differently. It's like right now, if you look at it. Uh, Halliburton went from like 16 minutes to 14 minutes to seven minutes to not even playing. Yeah. And they need a true point guard out there. And that's Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, he brings a lot to that team. He speeds up the pace of the game. He can hit that jump shot. It's not the prettiest jump shot, but he hits it at, at big times. And he's done it here in the um, in these exhibition games. And it's like Kerr has forgotten about him. I think he's pivotal. For this team moving forward. They're going to have to have a guy like him that can get around guys that can get in the paint and distribute, or he can finish. And that's what we're missing right now. We need him. He's big. Yeah, I agree. And that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like, you. I mean, you got to figure out the, and it's weird because you got to figure out the rotation, but this is something you had to have figured out way before the Paris games. You had to have this rotation down. I still feel like Kerr is still messing around with the rotation He's probably still trying to find his starters. I personally, this is just me. And to explain it, I don't know. But I personally don't like when Anthony Edwards and LeBron are on the say on the on the court together. I, I don't know why I don't like it. I think it's too much ball dominance of a player for both guys. And that's why I feel maybe they should be separated a little bit. But you're not going to put LeBron on the second team. Anthony Edwards is kind of make it a big stink about coming off the bench. He wants to be a starter. So that's where I feel like, I don't know, is it time to let the balls drop and just say, you know what, I'm running this damn team how I want to run it and take these egos out because I think the egos are still trying. They're still basically, they're coming out and it's going to affect Team USA in one of these games. And I feel like it's going to be a problem in one of these games. And that's why I don't have them winning the gold. Well, I still don't trust them uh, because of some of the individuals, man. Uh, Embiid is not a very trustworthy guy when it comes to team play. (laughs) And and Anthony Edwards sometimes wants to be the leader of the ship. Uh, Devin Booker wants to be the leader of the ship. Uh, I think the only one that's accepted his role, basically, is Jason Tatum. And uh, he's the one that seems to have sacrificed his offense the most, uh, other than Halliburton, who doesn't even hardly play. But yeah, they got to make some changes, man. I got they got to figure it out. Though. I think Halliburton just makes them a better team. And I, as far as Anthony Edwards and LeBron, I think uh, you give Anthony Edwards some minutes with that starting group. And if you got to sit LeBron down for three or four minutes while he's resting, you can turn the ball over to Anthony Edwards if that's what you choose to do. But yeah, I don't think they mesh together well either, uh, him and LeBron. So. Uh, Kerr's got a lot of different things he's got to figure out, man. It's going. They better do it now because next weekend they start the real deal. Yeah, and I think people like I think you and I. I know I was. I can't really speak for you, but I know I was overlooking Class C. But knowing that they've still got to play South Sudan again, who they had trouble with, they got to play Serbia. When you have Jokic and you have uh, Nikola Jovic, we've mentioned uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic. I mean, they've got players, and Serbia is a team that can definitely slow the slow the pace of the game down. They can make it very tough. They have a lot of big men uh, for Serbia, so they can make it really tough and just make it a snail pace game for the USA, and that could definitely affect Team USA. So Class C, with the exception of Puerto Rico, I mean, Class C is not exactly a walk in the park for Team USA, and like Chris uh, Leja saying, divas, divas everywhere. That That's the way I feel, too, and you know, Tim makes a great point. Eventually, we saw it during the regular season, Derek. Ant's ego kicked in in parts, and you saw how it affected Minnesota at some parts of the season. 
when that kicks in for well, Team USA, <laughs> that's trouble. Well, the good thing is Kara sit him on the bench. Uh, I don't think it's over as good for the team overall, but I think Ant knows is bigger than him. Um, that's what it's about. So I'm sure they all talked and they had from the beginning, and they know that guys are going to have to sacrifice, and that includes when they get frustrated. Yeah. You can't start going against the ship. Uh, you got to stay the grain, stick with you know, stay with the grain, and continue to trust the other guys and trust the process, as they say, and believe in these coaches. Uh, that's, that no one is bigger than this game, and that includes Anthony Edwards, and I'm sure he's mature enough now to know that. So I think that part, on that part, they'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm worried about when the egos actually start coming out. Um, you know, and I used to maybe think, man, I always think about maybe Curry, or, but I don't even, I mean, I'm not even having issues with Curry at all. I think Steph's at the M- point he's playing really good. It's just, I don't know, there's a certain M- guy. Embiid is... Embiid is the main guy you got to worry about because he's got to just go back to the history of what we've seen. Embiid is the whiner and all that. If it's not him, it's LeBron. But uh, it's been Embiid more so even than LeBron lately uh, with all the flopping and all that stuff. So he's the guy I'll be worried about mentally because every year it seems to, for some reason, they come up short. And at some point, you got to start looking at him. When you're looking at why Philadelphia always comes up short, we can't always use that Ben Simmons card. At some point, we got to start looking at Joel Embiid as well. And Ben's not even there anymore, so you can't use that card. That's the, that's the thing, you know. Philly, well, well, you know, people talk like he's still there. People act like Ben just <laughs> ruined everything, and he didn't. Oh, I know. I mean, you know what? Okay, he passed up a shot against the Atlanta Hawks that cost the 76ers. But how many years ago has that been, people? I mean, right? <laughs> like Ben's isn't, Ben hasn't been there in a good minute, so. Yeah, he, once you stop pulling back the curtain and realizing that Philly's struggles are not Ben's, they're still a person that is there. I mean, you can't blame James Harden. He's not there either anymore. So there's Tob- one. You can keep blaming Tobias. Yeah. You can keep blaming whoever you want to blame, Shaq Milton, whoever. At some point, you got. we saw what happened with Doc Rivers. Uh, so hopefully Nick Nurse will um, do better this coming year. And it starts with Joel Embiid. It ends with Joel Embiid. And that's why I worry about even on the uh, Olympic team, he would be the guy first that I would be worried about over everyone else as far as having the temper tantrum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I see Jeff's comment here. I'm going to get into this comment here about Gilbert Arenas. I, I, I read a little bit about it. I heard it. And he even left the comment on there for us. But before I get to Jeff's comment, let me get the JCs real quick. Special Leaf T out here it says, "Good evening. Should international play be included in a revamped NBA, making a more competitive global ball environment?" That that's kind of tough because I mean, you're talking what expansion overseas that would definitely um, have to take place. But if you're trying to international play be included in a revamped NBA, making a more competitive global ball. You'd have to add the rules about goaltending. You'd have to add, you know, the different rules. What rules do you have to implement to the NBA to make it feel like international ball? Because I don't think a lot of these NBA guys would like a lot of those rules. It would be not in I know for the NBA. And it, it kind of takes away the game because in the international ball, there is no zone under the basket. The big man can stay in there all day. And you can't do that in an uh, NBA ball. And I think people like that. That's what, that's the purpose of one of the purposes of them opening up the floor. They don't want a guy clogging up the middle and they want the ball moved offensively. That's why they've made some of these changes they've made. Yeah, they put a premium on scoring. So I like I would rather see international play. I I love the zone defense. I mean, if you want to have a big man camp underneath there, you know what? then you got to make your jumpers. You got to find ways to get to the basket. Just be, I mean, we played high school ball. We played, you know, you played college ball. Your zones allowed in those in high school and college. Never had a complaint about it. If a big man was clogging up the lane, you took it to him, you drew the foul, you got to the basket. I mean, there's ways around it, but because they emphasize scoring, I don't know if it would ra- actually, they'll be re uh, implementing anything right on there. Let's get to Jeff's question. So, Jeff says from Lockdown Spurs, what are your thoughts on Gilbert Arenas and his racist comments on Team Sedan? Comments that Embiid was throwing the game for Sedan, et cetera. He's getting cooked today. He also did mention basically it was Embiid throwing the game for his cousins uh, and uh, the explicit. They don't even have shoes. They get their shoes from America. 
We got to ship them shoes. They're shooting on peach baskets in the dirt. Those were Gilbert's comments. I did. I did hear those comments. So, you know, the, to me, it's flat out, you know, it's Gilbert Arenas. It's, it's ignorance. A, a lot of ignorance comes out of his mouth a lot, uh, even recently, but you know, I, I don't buy any of the stuff that Gilbert says, everything that he does say, man, you know, about the comments and all that he's making. It's just trying. It's, it's, it's the, it's the social media times, Derek. We keep saying that you're going to say whatever you can say to generate what views to generate likes, to generate people talking the buzz because it keeps you in the loop. It keeps everybody's, it keeps your name in everybody's mind and mouth. That's why I come from the Gilbert Arenas thing. That's why I don't really pay attention to what he says. All the time. Well, Gilbert says a lot of things that are off the wall. Um, he better be careful so he didn't get himself a, himself a lawsuit. Uh, talking about a guy cheating on games, throwing games, basically. And that's what he said about Embiid. Uh, him might, he might throw games, and the USA better be watching him. Uh, he did a thing on uh, social media with, his, with the eyes. But like we're watching you, Joel, and so all you know, all that crazy stuff. Um, but a lot of the comments he said were totally unnecessary. But uh, once again, it's Gilbert Arenas. Uh, I just I want to see good basketball. I don't want to be uh, focused too much on Gilbert because that's what he wants. He's looking for attention, and I don't really want to give it to him that attention. I want to keep it uh, on these guys that we Gary represent our country, the U.S. team, USA. Yeah, I feel the same way. That's what those are the thoughts that I've got on it. I don't pay much attention to Gilbert Arenas. Um, rarely does, in my opinion, does he say anything that's worth uh, even mentioning or repeating. Uh, it's it's just for likes, you know. You you put a mic in front of everybody, and everybody, you know, from the local level all the way to the national level, you see a lot of people that have mics in front of them, and they say whatever the hell they want to say. They don't care what they say. Why? Because it's going to get everybody talking and everybody looking. You know what? What it is is, oh, you know what? I'm going to tune into Gilbert's podcast tomorrow because he said this. I want to hear what he says now. You know, it's all fake stuff, man. It's just all fake stuff. Hey, Rudy. What's up, man? And I'm going to say this, man, because I listen to Gilbert a lot, and I watch that silly show, uh, him and Nick Anderson, uh, Nick uh, Young. I like Nick. But Gilbert, man, sometimes he says some good stuff, but sometimes the guy is crazy, man. Um, and we've got to look at who we're talking about. A guy that had gun, brought two guns to the locker room, man. Yeah. And I think he talks sometimes like people have totally forgotten that kind of stuff. Um Sometimes your credibility is not really what you want it to be because you've shown yourself to be someone else. And I think sometimes we see that with Gilbert Arenas. Uh, so, yeah, I don't take a lot that he says serious. Uh, it's a lot of off-the-wall stuff. He says it regularly. Yeah, that's the same way I feel about Gilbert. Um, Tim saying South Sudan, big man, come on, who is attending Duke this coming season and is a top lottery pick, so he's a good talent player. Look out for him, Derek. You don't have to tell Derek to look out for him. Derek's already a senior. South Sudan. <laughs> They've got a lot yes, of great sir. players, man. They've got a lot of great players for South Sudan. I mean, it's not even fun. I'm looking at it right now. I mean, you've even got older guys like Don Maker, who is a, you know, a former NBA player. Um, you know, it's going to be fun, man. I'm, I'm actually excited for the Olympics. I, I was excited to see South Sudan have a good run against the USA. They're going to get another chance at Team USA in class play. So it's going to be fun, man. Uh, JC, Philly still has a team. Even with the team 100% financing, and you say them still talks of them moving to Jersey. That the net 76ers? Is that what he's talking about? Or the Eagles? I don't know. Too sure. or even I hope he's not talking about that. I, I wouldn't imagine he was talking about the Eagles. No. They're not that upset with the team. Yeah, 76ers. I don't know about the 76ers, though. But, yeah, nonetheless, man. Team USA, You, we got an Olympic starting here in a minute. Before we go to commercial break, our last commercial break, Derek, what do you got on Team USA? I know you're still probably strong with them for the gold, but. I mean, the the class C, the group C is a difficult test. And what I was saying earlier to you was the fact that because you are in a lower end group, in my opinion, because I mean, like you said, Puerto Rico, South Sudan, give them a scare. Serbia can give them a scare. But nonetheless, Team USA should still be number one. I worry about injuries when you're playing teams that are, you know, not necessarily to your level. I worry about the injury factor. 
do you still have Team USA getting all the way to the gold medal game? Because out of out of Group C, A and B is just killer, man. Well, they got USA ranked number one. Uh, I think Canada's number two. Uh, if I remember correctly, Germany's like number four. Yeah, and they got Australia up there um, in one of the top six teams. Uh, it's going to be interesting, but. I got, yeah, we know France is right up there near the top. Um, so we got to see, man. I still believe Germany is a dangerous team until proven otherwise. Uh, we're not definitely not going to have it easy. I talked to you earlier today, and I told you when I looked at the teams and really evaluated it, Serbia has played us one time. They have the joker, so they're going to make some adjustments. I told you they're going to slow the game down and make it where it's not as many possessions, not as many shots. Yeah. And they're going to make the USA have to defend. So it's not going to be a total like the game with the first game when they played, uh, when the USA won by 14, I believe. Something like 86, 72, something like that, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's a different game. And then we have to win that game. And then three days later, you got South Sudan coming for their revenge. That, that's going to be interesting. And then two days later, you got Puerto Rico. Um, so it's not going to be easy. We're going to have to play team ball, but Hopefully we can get off to a good start this coming weekend and win game one. Uh, I'm gonna stay positive, but yeah, I don't, I can't say we're gonna win a gold medal right now. Yeah, I'm sadly, I mean, I'm I'm all about Team USA. I'm all about you know America and everything, but I I I still got them circled as bronze, man. I still got. They, they don't look that dominant, man. I mean, yeah. other teams have had opportunity to beat them. Sudan had a really good chance to beat them, and so did Germany. So. Uh, seeing a lot of these teams the second time around, even like Serbia, is not usually as easy the first time, the second time around. Yeah. So they're gonna have to still stay focused for this group so that they can come out undefeated. Because there's no guarantee they're even gonna come out of this three and zero. That is true because I mean the one thing about South Sudan is you gave them confidence. You gave them a lot of confidence. And, you know, moral victories are, you know, some hate them, some love them. But, you know, when you give a team like South Sudan confidence, that's kind of bad. Rudy, they have shooters. They have finishers. They defend. They have quick hands. They're, they're a good team. They can shoot the ball. And they got a guy that's been there, Royal Ivy. And uh, he's been with them now for three, three and a half years. And I don't think they're a team that's going to go away. I think they're going to be one of the surprise teams of the Olympics. Yeah, I can see them beating Serbia and Puerto Rico. I do. I actually think, to me, South Sudan is actually the third best team in that group. But, I mean, I could definitely see them beating Serbia. I mean, after what we've seen from them, they could very well be the second best team in that group. And that's, that's saying a lot. You know, that is saying a lot. Can they beat the Team USA? I mean, again, you saw what they were able to do in the exhibition season for Team USA. So anything is possible. Anything is possible. That is for sure. Are the issues with Team USA on players, rosters, or coaching Kerr? Wow. Um, both? <laughs> I would say both. If I, had, if I had to pick one, I think it's coaching. I, I think it's definitely coaching. This the coaching part should have already been nailed down. I think Kerr should have had everything nailed down way before the way before these these few uh, exhibition games were happening. You should have seen already, you know, a dominant type of team, the way they're going to play, rotation set, everything. But we haven't even seen that, man. So I, for me, if I had to pick one, it's coaching. But yeah, it's definitely both, Eric. And the coaching still makes me a little nervous because, like I said um, earlier, the, the final, the four guys, the five guys off the bench, four of them have been playing the exact same time. Uh, Anthony Davis, Tatum, Derek White, and uh, I'm leaving out one. They all played uh, 14 minutes, and then Anthony Edwards has played the most. Devin Booker. No, Booker's been starting. Drew Hall. Uh, but it's four guys. No, Drew, Drew started. Oh, he did start. Jason Tatum. Derek White, Anthony Davis, and Bam Adebayo. Adebayo. Those four have been playing the same amount of minutes. Uh, they played 14 minutes in the game yesterday. And so Anthony Edwards played 20 minutes. So Kerr's been trying to go with this five guys and then switch in five, and he'll take out one of the starters and put in Anthony Edwards and get him some extra minutes. But that's not going to uh, be good enough. They got to start playing guys who are playing well according to who's playing well. 
I don't care about we you can't go on the script that we're gonna play a guy fourteen minutes if he's not producing. Yeah. So it's time to win now. This is not time to this is no exhibition season anymore. It's all about winning and doing what's best for the team. And sometimes that might entail sitting down some guys where they're not playing the minutes they've been accustomed to. This is not preseason anymore. It's time to tighten up the loose, tighten up the uh let me see what I want to say, the rope, whatever. It's time to start reeling guys in now and going with a certain lineup and sticking to that. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about too, man. The thing is, is that, you know, you've got them in and out, in and out, in and out, but it, it goes back to like, for me, the whole, the, the whole coaching thing. It's got to be coaching for me because like if you go back to, uh, go back to the original dream team. I mean, you had Chuck Daly as the coach. You had what, Krzyzewski, uh, you had some good coaches there, but these guys knew how to coach and they, they already had everything going in to the exhibition season and then into the Olympics. They had it down. They knew who they were going to play. But what I also feel is that you've got to treat it, like I said earlier, the NBA style of basketball where you're trying to win because if, put it this way, if you've got a team of shooters out there, you've got to be able to match up to them. You can't say, okay, well, my five are out there. Oh, okay. Well, let me get my next five out there. Hell, if you got no defenders, if you got nobody that can score on a certain lineup, what good is that going to do you? You've got a coach to what the other team is doing for you, against you. That's what I have a feeling that Kurt's doing. He's like, put him out here, put him out here, put him out here. It's like, hey, Rudy, you, if you're, have you ever thought about, not to cut you off, I'm sorry, but have you ever thought about you have a coach like in Steve Kerr's position? Uh, sometimes when you taste this success, uh, guys don't listen. They can be a little hard-headed, a little stubborn. Yeah, I've seen Ty Lu try to talk to Kerr uh, sometimes, and I don't know how receptive he is, but sometimes you got to come outside of yourself, and you got to give for the team as well, just like the players. And sometimes I wonder if Kerr really listens to Ty Lu's uh thoughts, or if he listens to his other assistant coaches' uh, thoughts, what they have to say. And to me, that's it. That's important, isn't it? It's very important. I mean... You got Foster who's won. Yeah. Ty Lue has won. Yeah, and that's the thing. is, I but, don't... They haven't, but they haven't won four times, and I think sometimes a coach can get a little ahead of themselves, I'll say. I believe so. I believe this is the case, man. You know, and we got JC. Could Kirby playing a coy holding back purpose of confusing the lineups for other teams? I don't think so. I don't oh, think so at all, man. I don't think he's playing coy. Honestly, I really don't think he actually has has it locked down just yet. I mean, I have yet to, and I, I've seen te- a couple of Team USA games. I haven't seen all of them, and I haven't seen the entire games. But there's times where they look good. And it's like, okay, this is what we're seeing. And then you've got the next game, South Sudan. And it's like, what the hell's going on? My thing is, where's the adjustments? If you are, you know, the head coach of Team USA, A, you need to listen to your assistant coaches because as you're a, you've been a head coach, I've been a head coach. The thing is, is that I have assistant coaches. You have assistant coaches for a reason. There's things that I'm not seeing that you're probably seeing. I need your input. There is ideas where, you know what, I'm coaching this way, but it's not working. What do you have? I need your help. I need your input on this. That's the whole point of assistant coaches, man. I mean, they're there to help you succeed. They're there to help you. But I feel like it's right. He's not listening to him. And I don't know if he's playing coy, but I have yet to see this team gel the way they should have been this uh, in the offseason. Uh, we're going to need to pick up the pace, like against Serbia. That's why I said Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah. You got a guy sitting down that averaged 10.9 assists a game, man. And we need to be getting out using our advantage, which is getting out on the break. And that's what we need to do. That's how you don't kill guys on the other end. You can get out and get some easy baskets. And then you got a chance to get back on defense. But we got to – I don't like our half-court game that much. Uh, I think sometimes, like I say, we become stagnant. We don't move the ball quick enough or move it to the right guy. And that's what's been hurting us the most. So the guys are going to have to give in and stop being, um, you know, thinking about themselves, I'll say, and start playing more for the team. And if they do that, then then they've got a chance to win gold. Yeah, before we go to commercial break, our last commercial break here, we'll come back to talk some NFL. Uh, we'll get to Jeff real quick. We actually talked about this a little while ago, the NBA completely going 100% fever rules and style. 
they won't do it. There's no way. You're talking about uh, goaltending in the NBA. You're talking about clogging up the lane. They've been trying for years, and they've success. They've succeeded of getting out of that. You know, remember the 89 to 75 games. You know, they want high scoring. They want fast paced games. If you adopt the FIBA rules, you're talking about zone play. You're talking about a big man clogging the lane. It's going to be nothing but shooting. But you know what? It's going to be boring. Physical, physical, what extreme physicality. Yeah. So I mean, you're you're definitely not going to probably adopt it now. Can they adopt some of the rules? I don't know. I mean, I like the goaltending rule. It, it helps, you know, for you know when you're going to international play. But again, it kills the scoring. I mean, they 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 love what they're doing in the scoring column. 120 points, 130 points. You know, they love it. It's it's exciting for fans. But then you see the international play, and it just kind of affects everything that they do for Team USA. So. I fully don't think that they will bring in any type of uh, FIBA rules at all. I think they're just going to keep it the way it is. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk some NFL talk. Dallas Cowboys, CD Lamb, Derek, he's holding out. He's not going to report on Wednesday tomorrow. So he's holding out. You got people screaming. You got you got to pay CD, but you don't pay Dak. Hello. We've mentioned before Dak Prescott. We're going to have to we're going to have to. We're going to have to let everybody know again our feelings on why you do pay Dak Prescott. Hall of Famer Derek Irvin, uh, Rudy Compost Leader. When we get back, it'll be NFL Talk. It'll be the last quarter here uh, for Sweep the League. Shout out to MCS General Contracting Special Leaf T. Also, uh, Castro and Sun Solar and La Cucina Taco Truck will be back. Howdy from Texas. You've got to be tired of the sizzling electric bills in the Texas heat, right? Well, partner, we've got the solution for you. Introducing Castro and Sun Solar, harnessing the power of the sun to save you some serious cash. Their top-notch solar panels will have you soaking up the savings in no time. Imagine lower electric bills, a reduced carbon footprint, and the satisfaction of going green. Their expert team will take care of everything from installation to maintenance. We're talking hassle-free, worry-free, and stress-free solar solutions. So why wait? Join the solar revolution with Castro and Sun Solar. Let the Texas sun shine bright and your savings shine even brighter. Castro and Sun Solar, empowering your home one sunbeam at a time. Call in today, and let's get this solar party started. Can you imagine a world where nature meets wellness, where every sip you take nourishes your body and soul? Introducing Special Leaf Tea, a line of 100% natural, ready-to-drink iced teas crafted to boost your immunity and energy. With four unique flavors to choose from, as in hibiscus blueberry, tangerine ginger, pomegranate blueberry, or the original, you can indulge in the perfect blend of taste and nutrition. Their teas are carefully crafted with two times the antioxidants and no added sugar. They're known to help with blood pressure, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, cholesterol, weight management, and even provide natural energy without caffeine. Join the movement towards natural wellness Order now at www.specialleaf.com and start sipping your way to a healthier, happier you. Special Leaf Tea. Nature in every sip. Proud sponsors of Sweet the Leaf. Talking about Wimby, the next in line, future of the league, and he's shot in fine. That is the Wemby song. It is available on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, wherever music is available. Go download it now. Uh, collaboration between STL and SOTB. We got a lot more music coming out. Are you wrestling fans? We got a Lucia Underground song that's getting ready to be released, as well as other songs worldwide. 
Shout out to our sponsors, MCS General Contracting, Special Leaf Tea, La Cocina Taco Truck, Castro and Sun Solar, all proud sponsors of Sweep the League, all in partnership. STL, Sweep the League, partners with Locked On Spurs. You'll catch us on Locked On Spurs. You'll have Jeff here on Sweep the League. Got a nice little partnership going there. This last segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting, La Cocina Taco Truck, Castro and Sun Solar, and Special Leaf Tea, all proud sponsors of Sweep the league and we're getting the NFL, man. It's funny because I'm looking at some of the comments and I'm laughing uh, during the comments and I have Leha in here. It says, y'all remember that scene from Rush Hour 3 where the cab driver is talking to us about USA basketball. It's going to be real funny if they don't win gold. I've been saying they're going to win bronze, so I kind of feel a little happy if they don't win gold, but it would be kind of funny. I do remember that scene in Rush Hour 3, man. It, it, People, I mean, people are kind of expecting them to win gold. And I mean, they got the talent. They got the team, too. I just don't know if it's like a puzzle, Derek. You got everything there and it's put together, but you got those few pieces that just don't fit right. And you got to get them in there somehow. It's just like, man, where does it go? It goes somewhere in here. That's the way I feel about Team USA, man. That's why I don't have them winning gold. Like, I really don't. Well, the ru- the rules are one thing. And then uh, the pl- mixture of players is another. So we'll see if Kerr and the guys can uh, make the adjustments. There are going to be several adjustments they're going to have to make, uh, and they have to do them quickly. And, hey, no time like the present. they got to figure it out. Um, they go into these games this weekend, and I'm hoping we're ready. I'm going to support them. Uh, I think they win game one, hopefully, against Serbia. But, yeah, it's not going to be a cakewalk at all. Yeah, definitely not. Leia's also here. Shout out to Castro. and says they got them set up with the panels. Uh, Quick thing about uh, Castro and Sun Solar. If you guys contact them and you guys do go solar, we're going to take care of you here at Sweep the League as well. So you're going to get a, a nice little prize from us here from Sweep the League. We're partners with Castro and Sun Solar. I'm actually looking at to getting my solar panels up here uh, pretty soon. I'm, well, I'm in negotiations for that because, geez, man, CPS, but we don't have CPS out here. We have GVEC it. Oh my God, the bills are crazy. I'm like, no, man, I got to figure something out, Derek. I'm, I'm about to get a couple of pencils and start rubbing them together, what they used to do, and <laughs> all that stuff from back in the day, man. I got to get something to create electricity out here because this is way too expensive. So, um, yeah, so Tim's jumping in here. And again, we're going to talk some CD Lamb talk here for the Dallas Cowboys overall NFL talk. But uh, Adam Schefter's reporting that CD Lamb's not going to be reporting the camp. He doesn't have a deal in place. They're trying to get a deal done to where he does get into camp. He wants to obviously get paid. I mean, he's making what, 13 or $17 million this coming season. He wants that Justin Jefferson type of money. I have no problem playing CD lamb. I have a problem with people like Tim's mentioning and other people saying you do not pay Dak Prescott. How many times? And I, I'm guilty, Derek. I'm guilty because I was one of those guys in the beginning. Don't pay Dak. Don't pay Dak. He's not going to win you anything. He's not going to. Okay. He may not win you a Super Bowl, but who in the hell out there is going to win you a Super Bowl outside of Patrick Mahomes, outside of certain players? Dak Prescott was second in MVP voting. And you still have majority of people that say, don't pay Dak Prescott. Guess what? Lamar Jackson is a two-time MVP. How many Super Bowls does he have? None. So why are we putting the blame on Dak? I mean, you got to have a quarterback in this league. There's no one better out there than him right now. Got to pay him, right? Well, I think you have to pay CD first, of course. And uh, I told you, I, I remember we had this discussion about Dak and Micah. And CD, and I talked about CD was at the top of my charts yeah. as far as having to replace him. I thought he was the hardest guy to replace. So I guess maybe they agree with me because they're making sure they're going to get his deal done. Now, they don't want this to turn into a long holdout. Yeah. And they need to get him in camp as soon as possible. Um, and I think they're going to make that happen. As far as Dak, I mean, you said it already. You know, I mentioned that many times. He was second in MVP voting. Um, and there's nobody out there that's better than Dak Prescott that you could bring into the Cowboys organization right now. So you got to kind of let it ride and continue to try to put players around him. And that includes the offensive line. And we've never seen a full Cowboys, a healthy team with Dak 
as far as the offensive line all being in the on, in core, all those guys, and then in the back, you know, in the backfield uh, defensively out there, the defensive backs, something is always going wrong. Yeah. If they can stay healthy, uh, we have to. It still remains to be seen if Dak can lead them to a championship yet. But uh, I think they de- definitely have to pay him. Uh, man, we might be talking what in the sixty million dollar range. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I still think they have to make it happen. So, and it's funny because I mean, you know, I, I, we love Tim here. Tim always a part of the show. Always makes his presence felt, but. Dak doesn't show up in the big games. I mean, can the same thing be said for Lamar Jackson? Do we? Do you put Lamar Jackson on a different pedestal than Dak Prescott because he hasn't won the big game, according to Dak? I mean, let's be real. What Jalen Hurts has been there. Patrick Mahomes has been there. You know, Joe Burrow's getting there. I mean, you're talking guys. You're talking less than a handful of guys that can actually go to a team and make it to a Super Bowl. Less than a handful. But these guys would rather pay Justin Herbert as a cowboy than Dak Prescott. Hey, hey Rudy, who was first and second in the quarterback voting this year? That was, uh, what, Lamar and Dak? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of just making sure I wasn't... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a senile. I mean, <laughs> you got to pay the man. Lamar just got paid. And Dak is Lamar to the Cowboys. We've got to be realistic about it. We might not agree that he's on the same level as Lamar or Patrick Mahomes, but he's the best option for the Cowboys moving forward. And on that alone, you got to pay. Market value is market value. And he's the best option out there. So you got to pay the man. Yeah, you have to. I mean, even Jordan Love is holding out from Green Bay right now. He wants a paycheck. He wants to get his back. So if you're putting side-by-side Jordan Love and Dak Prescott, I mean, hell, if you're going to pay Jordan, you you got to pay Dak. Dak's got way, way more experience. He's obviously got, you know, more MVP votes than Jordan Look, Love. This right here says, can you see this paper? Uh-huh. All right, I'm, if I'm his agent, that paper, when you go in with your resume, Dak's resume, say, you could remember that we're in a what have you done for me lately world, aren't we? Yeah. So what has he done lately? He's finished second in MVP voting. Yeah. So it's hard to tell him no when he goes in there and wants to be paid the dollars that he feel he's earned. If you look at his body of work, he's done what he's supposed to do. And on that alone, you got to pay him. Yeah, not only that. I mean, the the contracts are. I mean, they're going to be crazy for a quarterback. That, that's to be real. The quarterback is the main focal point on every football team. And you're right. It's Lamar. It's Dak last year. It's one and two. I mean, Tua Tungaviola is going to get paid by Miami. What has he done? He doesn't show up in any of the big games in the regular season. But he's still going to get paid because Miami knows there's no other option for them out there than Tua. <laughs> Look, man, you got Jerry World. You could you can compare <laughs> to any quarterback out there, and that includes uh, Hurts getting that big deal, uh, and then uh, Lamar passing him up by whatever a million, whatever. But you got to remember where he's playing. The guy's playing in Jerry World for the America's team, the Dallas Cowboys who have nothing but money, and you, you got to take Dak because he's the best option by far. If there was someone that was even a question that was on his level, it might be a debate. But the fact that you have no one better, no better option, you have to pay him. A hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. And then what? at what point does it say, does it come back to say, okay, Dak is not going to win us the Super Bowl? Well, last time I checked, Dak wasn't the only player on the team, but Dak's not even a head coach. At what point does it look at the head coach and say, can we get a head coach to get us there? That's where I look at it the most. I think Dak is serviceable, but the only way for a player to be successful is to have the right head coach. Tom Brady was not a first round pick. Hell, he wasn't even a second, third, fourth round pick. I mean, Look at the career Tom Brady had, and it do a lot to coaching. 
Bill Belichick, the best coach in football. I mean, well, one of the best coaches in football, period. It goes to coaching. So at what point do we stop having everybody point the finger at a player and say, you know what? McCarthy is just going to get it done with him. <laughs> Mike McCarthy is Doc Rivers of the NFL. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I do like that, man. He's the Doc Rivers, man. I mean, McCarthy's one with what? Aaron Rodgers? I mean, is Zach Prescott prime Aaron Rodgers? No, He's had Rodgers. all these rosters. And he's got that one championship, just like Doc. And he's come up short with all-star rosters from that point on. It's not always just the players. It's the person that's making the adjustments or lack of adjustments, as you just said. And sometimes it goes back (laughs) on the coach. Eventually, it has to go back on the coach, man. There's no way to even – I mean, after this season – if you don't win, which I, of course I don't have the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl, but if if they can get to the NFC title game, I say it's a success. But no matter what, if there is no Super Bowl title at the end for the Cowboys, this has to be McCarthy's last year. They they've got to move on completely. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You get no argument here. Uh, even <laughs> though he's gone, did, he's did a lot better than Jason Garrett record wise. Yeah. But as far as the playoffs, he hasn't done much better or uh, better at all. So, yeah, I think this is uh, possibly his swan song if they don't get it done this time. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people point to Dak against San Francisco a couple of years back when he ran the ball, didn't have a timeout, didn't couldn't spike the ball. They lost to the 49ers in the playoffs. Again, it's one play, man. I mean, Dak, last I checked, Dak wasn't a cornerback or, you know, a defensive end last year when they played Green Bay. I mean, he couldn't stop Aaron Jones. I mean, that wasn't his job. So, again, it comes down to the coaching staff for me. At what point? And it's got to be like, okay, McCarthy, you, you have a name. You have a Super Bowl. Awesome. Wouldn't be the last time Jerry fired a coach, you know, after winning a Super Bowl. I mean, that's for damn sure. It happened before. I mean, Jerry's probably already looking at something, man. In case it doesn't go well early in the season, uh, they I don't know if they they brought back Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, I still don't understand that, but I guess they know something maybe that I don't know, or they think they know something I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is it, man. Jared, Mike McCarthy knows he has to win this year. Um, this is make or bust. And if they don't win, you say getting to the Super Bowl or whatever. I, I think it's only if no getting to the finals, the the conference finals. I don't yeah. think that's going to be enough. I think it's win, win or else in Dallas. And that's how I think the attitude Jerry has because Jerry's not aging backwards. No, he's not. I think, like I said, even if they even if they win a Super Bowl, I think Jerry should probably just move on from McCarthy. He said, "Thanks for the Super Bowl, appreciate it. You're you're gone. I mean, do it overnight the way he did it with Jimmy Johnson. Just fire him on, overnight when everybody was asleep." Uh, Tim's reminding us about Danny White couldn't win the Super Bowl. I mean, one of the more statistical quarterbacks in Cowboy history, and Tony Romo, he couldn't win the Super Bowl either. But you know, it, there's one Super Bowl champion a year. And I always point back to one person and you can have the greatest statistics in football. You can be one of the greatest quarterbacks in football and just never win the game. It's every damn sport, you know, all time leading scorer for a while was Carl Malone or Carl Malone. I mean, he didn't win a title at all. Um, You're talking, you know, I mean, one of the best scorers, best duos in Malone, Stockton, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, go to Dan Marino. Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl, and he's arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. So, yeah, I mean, it goes back to... My brother never won one five-time first-team All-NBA. But uh, first ballot hauler, top 50 and 75, but he never won a championship. When you run into guys by the name of Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and James Worthy, things might not always go the way you planned them. (laughs) And sometimes guys just always seem to come up on the short end. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's the thing is that, you know, you can be one of the greatest of all time and never get a championship. 
never get to that, you know, that point ever. And that, that does suck, man. It sucks, but that's just the nature of the beast. We all can't be Patrick Mahomes blessed with an Andy Reid type of coach and Andy Reid type of offense that you fit perfectly in, you know, or Tom Brady where Bill's got a structure and it works. I mean, we are, we are all not blessed to have coaches like that. I think if the Cowboys were to get a better coach and you know what, Bill's out there. So let's be real. There's, you know, Jerry's got a little bit of talking with Steven about maybe Bill. The only problem Jerry has is Bill's going to want a lot of control. I doubt Jerry gives yeah. him that control, man. <laughs> uh, would you have already would you have already traded Dak by now for picks and or players? I honestly know. I mean, there's no way to trade. Nobody's going to give you what you're looking for in Dak. But at the same time, if you crutch if you crutch yourself with no quarterback, you're doing more damage than anything. I mean, we're going to see how it balances out for Minnesota this year. You pay the best wide receiver in the league, but you still got to get him the damn ball. I mean, here's to hoping that Minnesota figures out they can get him the ball here. So, yeah, it's it's kind of a tough thing. Me, I would not have traded Dak. I mean, maybe if I had a really good offer on the table, that would make sense. But if you trade Dak, you don't have a quarterback in return. Your season is lost before it even started. Young guys aren't always the answer either, man. People get impatient. You know, I had a quarterback I thought was going to succeed, and I really did. And and you remember the name, Blake Bortles? <laughs> I do remember Blake. So, so sometimes it just doesn't work out, man. And then when you're trying to replace a Dak, I mean, you got to get a great offer to even consider it. And I don't think they've had anything that would match up that will make them happy enough to get up, um, give up a Dak Prescott at this point. They're, the team has continued to uh, do better, and you got to factor that in. And Dak is part of that. I don't know why people never talk positive about Dak. The team has continued to get better. And don't you have to get, uh, get better before you can get over the hump and win that championship? Yeah. And so he's, he's, I think yeah. he, he's done his part, and now they got to pay the man. they got to break the bank for him, and I think he's earned it. And that's kind of remember what I said when we were talking about who do you pay between Micah, Dak, and CD. You know, I was saying Dak's got to be paid. You know, most important position there. There's really nobody other out there that you can pay uh, to to help lead your team. And then I made the comment in the draft these days, you can easily go get a wide receiver one. You can easily go get a defensive end one. And that's why I said I think out of all of them, Micah's going to be the one that's left out. And here we are. You pay CD, you pay Dak. Mike is going to be the one that's probably left out. And that's who I was saying a long time ago is the one guy, I think, because you can go into the draft and get, you know, a top defensive end, but you're going to lose Michael Parsons. And that's, it sucks, but I think that's the way that they're going to end up going. I really do. But even at the quarterback spot, do you remember how everybody was on the bandwagon, Cooper Rush? Yeah, I was. I Is he the guy him. that can win a Super Bowl with you? Does he give you a better chance than Dak? That's no. been proven over the course of time and all these practices or whatever that that's not the right move. So yeah. sometimes we can want to anoint these younger guys before their time, and then some we can want to anoint, but they just don't have it in them. And we have to sometimes yeah. come to uh, be realistic and accept that and uh, go, you know, you got to see what Stephen Jones. We don't see what they see, and sometimes you got to just believe in your team and the, you know the direction they're heading. Yeah, and you know, let me uh, before we go, I want to, I want to reiterate this because I, I live by this, and this is from Jerry West. Rest in peace. I've said it before on the show. I'm gonna say it again. This is a perfect spot to drop a Jerry West quote. And what is popular isn't always right, and what is right isn't always popular. That's from Jerry West, and that is so true, man. The popular decision isn't always the right one. So, I mean, do you want to cut Dak? Dak, cutting Dak, letting him go, letting him walk. That's the popular decision right now, but it's probably not the right one. What if he goes to another team, Super Bowl bound, Super Bowl appearances, has a chance at the big game? Then you're sitting there like, what did we do? Well, like, come on, man. The sound Darnold start out blazing saddles? No. No. He's playing better, but he's still not. The Trevor Lawrence? No. No. 
we could think all these guys are going to come in tearing it up. And then you get to the NFL, which is once again bigger, faster, and stronger. Yeah. And some guys just can't make the adjustment. And they, you see their ceiling quickly. They never get any better. But you got guys like Dak who has continued to get better to ascend. And he's become the, the second in the MVP voting. So that means he is on the upward trend. And I got to roll with that. Uh, so, yeah, he's got to be signed. Uh, Micah's got to be signed. But they definitely need to take care of C.D. Lamb uh, quickly. Yeah, so – I guess before we go, if you had to get one of those guys out, if one of them is the oddball out, which one would it be? I mean, for me, it's going to be Micah. <laughs> it's got to be Micah. It can't be CD. Let me say, didn't the man have 1,460-something <laughs> yards last year? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you got right now, he's hot as fire. Uh, so you got to go with him. Uh, the odd guy out would be Micah, and Micah's the one that does the most talking. And then Micah's has spells where he hasn't shown up in the playoffs. And that they don't talk about that as much as they talk about Dak. What about Micah in the playoffs? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you got to talk about everything, man. You got to look at everybody. But, again, I, I think with the new NFL uh, numbers coming out, I don't think they've been released just yet. There might be just enough money there uh, to pay all three. But you might be crippling yourself by paying all three. And you have to kind of cut corners somewhere. So we'll end up seeing what's happening. And this was Taco Tuesday. It was Hall of Famer Derek Irvin, Rudy Campos Jr. Coach Gio is still on vacation. I trust me, Derek. I, we paid his NIL deal. He's he's good. He's just on vacation <laughs> right now. So, um, but definitely uh, shout out to everybody that's on the stream tonight. We were at fifty eight, sixty plus on the stream tonight. So appreciate everybody joining us here on Taco Tuesday. We got more talk this week. And actually, I want to give a quick shout out to everybody from last night at the wrestling show. We've got more wrestling content that's going to be coming out. We've got a lot of shorts, a lot of videos coming out. Uh, we've got some guys that are going to be doing a lot of wrestling talk. So we are expanding more here on the Sweep the League Network. So just keep your eyes peeled. Hit the uh, subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube at Sweep the League TV. Smash that subscribe button because we got a whole lot coming up. A whole lot coming up. Uh, Locked on says, does Jerry, do you think Jerry really wants to win? I think Jerry just wants to make money. Mm -hmm. Jerry, that's what I've been saying for a while. You think Jerry uh, if he can make money and win, I'm sure he'd take it both ways. But yeah, of course, money's his first thing. Yeah, money's got to be his first thing. One last one before we go. Who's the most pressure coming up this season, Dak or CJ? Honestly, it's Dak. CJ is just basically Dak. a rookie. I mean, yeah, he's still coming yeah. off the rookie season. So I, I it's weird. We're going to talk more about C.J. Stroud coming up probably later on in the week. I, I don't think he's going to have that sophomore slump that we see, uh, but I do think he's going to have just a little bit about maybe the same type of numbers, maybe a tad bit less, I think, just because defensive coordinator is going to be able to see. Teams are, more, teams are more aware of him. Exactly. So I think he might. And the, and the team, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I think it's going to be Dak. And appreciate you, Louie, man. Great show, guys. Appreciate you. La Casino Taco Truck. Uh, definitely got to hit them up, man. They got the best food out there, 100%. So, for Hall of Famer Derek Gervin, Rudy Campos, Jr. until we sweep the league again tomorrow, we will see you later, Knuckleheads. Everybody have a good night. Stay safe.